Uh, thank you, Bernadine, and um, can I acknowledge you, the other councillors here, uh, and Councillor Fostacki, who's across the river. It's always a great challenge for um, <laughs> councillors north of the river, I find. Especially uh, my bike. And um, uh, my fellow candidates, uh, who, of course, are also councillors. Can I begin by acknowledging that we meet here on the traditional lands of the Kulin Nation, and like the Mayor, acknowledge the people of the Bunurong and their special relationship to this place and the other people from other communities, uh, other elders from communities who might be with us here today. Um, so in the short time allotted to me, uh, I just wanted to make a few general comments and then a few specific comments about uh, public transport in particular uh, in this community. So if any government uh, in Victoria's history uh, can be accused of taking public transport and transport infrastructure seriously, it is this one. This is a government that over the last 300 years has taken investment and uh, the ability to deliver projects and to get projects done to new heights. Uh, the current 27 uh, dangerous level crossings that have been removed uh, and we hope that that might be able to get to about 30 by the end of the year of our commitment to remove 50 dangerous level crossings from around metropolitan Melbourne being one case in point. Uh, Metro One, uh, which does touch on this community at the, the, the electoral district public park at the top end uh, with the Anzac station is uh, yet another example of that. But we could also hone down to any number of wider state projects or indeed regional or indeed local projects. So whether it's issues around uh, the delivery of the 20 new that are now operating, the class trams that uh, are now in the system, the improved and expanded uh, schedules and timetables for certainly the major tram routes in this community, the 109, the 96, the St Kilda Road trams, and to a lesser degree the 12 and the 1, all reflect uh, increased investment in those important prospects. In terms of uh, wider programs, whether it's the expansion of bus routes, whether it's the expansion of different methods of how we deal with the uh, challenges of growth, as the Mayor's pointed to in this community, let alone Melbourne, that's the thesis that underpins uh, those investments. How do we deliver the kind of programs that we need, not just in this district, not just in the city of Port Phillip, but across Melbourne and across Victoria, that deliver those kind of uh, growth opportunities but change the nature of our community from a car dependent one to one that focuses increasingly on sustainable and particularly public transport. And in that regard, the city shaping proposal, the Melbourne Metropolitan Rail Loop is, um, uh, the suburban rail loop is a exciting and bold vision that will reshape the way in which public transport options for communities that up until this point of time don't really consider public transport part of their uh, routine, unlike uh, the relatively speaking rich public transport community that we're a part of. That's the prospect that uh, excites uh, this government and certainly excites me as to how we can really deliver city shaping 21st century opportunities to deliver projects. And I know this government can, uh, has, through its track record, demonstrated that it can deliver those projects. Melbourne Metro One is 12 months ahead of schedule, and we hope that it will uh, further improve its prospects of delivery ahead of schedule and on time. But in the short time that's allotted to me, if I could perhaps focus back on this community. To deliver, for instance, Melbourne Metro One, uh, in a way in which sustains the continued delivery of heavy rail in and around Melbourne and in and around Victoria, uh, in and around inner Melbourne, is a real challenge. Melbourne Metro 1 is necessarily by its very title uh, a precursor to Melbourne Metro 2. The Parkville station is being delivered right now in a way in which Melbourne Metro 2 uh, is integrated into its next future design. The prospects whereby the uh, rail loop project, which would also incorporate the uh, commitments and the plans being delivered for the 
underground rail to Sunshine as a part of the uh, rail, heavy rail to the airport also fits into that prospect uh, because the work that's being done there reflects the uh, investment prospects of that uh, rail tunnel uh, going through Newport. And they are, of course, the two ends for Metro 2. So in terms of uh, where Metro 2, uh, in the inevitability of it being delivered, Melbourne uh, is already positioning for that. In terms of the detailed work that will go with that, uh, the uh, very extensive planning panel that uh, we've been undoing the mess that uh, was left to us in Fisherman's Bend addresses that issue. There was extensive um, consultation with communities, with two local councils, uh, and with plenty of others as to how to undo the capital city zone mess that was left for us, and particularly where will the uh, rail uh, alignments go, and there's been extensive work done in the uh, planning panel submissions, which were very extensive, and of course went well beyond just transport that uh, that panel has reported. That report is with the Minister, and it's our expectation that that report, together with the necessary planning amendments, will be uh, delivered before the end of this parliamentary term, so that is locked into the planning scheme. Which, of course, uh, is the way in which, ultimately, as the Mayor's indicated, we will achieve that 80% sustainable, active, either direct uh, public transport or walking, cycling uh, movements <coughs> in Fishman's Bend. In the interim, making sure that the $5 million that is already there <coughs> allocated now for how the tram uh, system within Fishman's Bend will be delivered is equally important. That was also the subject of extensive debate uh, and some controversy at the planning panel report. And again, we look forward to that planning scheme amendment locking in that issue. There is some controversy as to how to actually cross the Yarra, uh, but I am very much of the view that we will let that decision be made by the experts based on the panel report. I do, however, note uh, that there are some people in the uh, Laurel Street precincts who are purporting to speak for the wider community. Let's just wait and see what happens with that um, uh, argument as to where and how and best to cross the Yarra for that $5 million 